Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I did have an introduction, but like I said, I'm just going to scrap it. So I'm just going to hand over to James Howell. I love that surname. Um, Director of Turning Factor. And he's going to go through identities of 10 key leadership skills and provide you with valuable insights into how we can provide influential and transformational leadership that will inspire loyalty and motivation throughout the business. You can ask questions during the presentation and there will be a Q&A afterwards. So, James, over to you. Right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, well, it was a lovely morning. So, hopefully, it's going to be, um, we'll get, get through this. We've got quite a lot to go through today. And for me, the reason why I was quite really inspired by this, but we've seen literally hundreds of leaders over the years from chief executive of multinationals to be people who are just starting their own businesses. And we, all we've seen is that leadership is undervalued as a skill. It's a real skill. It's, you always ask, can you, are you born or are you, are, you know, do you learn? Well, you can do both. But the big thing here is what we're looking about is in these times is that the changing times we're in is that the skill of leadership is so much more important than it ever, ever was before. And we'll go through that. We'll, we've got quite a few to go through. Um, but what I want to ask you to start off with is um, a question. What is your biggest challenges are you having in your day-to-day -day business today as business leaders or owners or managers or or what are you what's your biggest chance so to put that into the chat function and we'll just see if we're going to ask maybe some questions a question to yourself what are you having as a challenge for you today in your day-to-day -day life um, we've seen so many different things occurring to give you some insight we've just seen you know, companies with these changing times where people driving all over the place. And there's one company who's talking to have actually cut their actual expenses by 30,000 a, a month, not a year, a month, solely by not driving, by using technology. Um, other companies, other companies have actually, when well, you're talking on the big scale, talking to a bank, and they were actually looking, they've got massive offices in London, they're looking to actually reduce the size of their office by a tenth. So only a tenth of the size of the office. And they said, you know what, this home working, this is what we're going to carry. I don't know why we didn't do it before. We didn't trust the staff. We didn't trust the people before. Um, so there's loads of changes going on. And I was, you know, not even you know, in the public sector, I was talking to a friend who's in the medical industry, so historically he used to, he was saying about a, a consultant that used to come from Wales to Norwich every Tuesday, he used to drive there as about an hour and a half drive, have his meeting for an hour, drive back. He doesn't do that anymore. The guy has saved so much more time. More importantly, just think about the cost of that, a consultant driving around. So he's had to change his habits. Things, habits and things have changed. Have we got anything come in at all? Um, yeah, so we've got quite a few. So we've got Kath says motivating staff. Mm. Um, then we've got time, not enough hours in the day. Yeah. Um, Laura says driving focus at board level. Um, we've then got James that says uncertainty for the future as to when we can operate fully again. Anthony says, working from home, not having face-to-face -face contact. Louise says, import and export from China and materials running dry around the UK. Um, I love it. You're all such, not feisty. You're so, what is the word? We're getting lots of feedback. I can't okay. think of what I'm trying to say. Um, Marion says, challenge in terms of marketing, arts, activities, as no one is going to venues at the moment. Um, Sophia says too much screen time and not enough personal interaction. Um, Marion says technology is not a something. I don't know what this word is. Substitute. Yeah, that's a good one. There is sometimes you miss clues by not being in the actual place. And then Leah says adapting working practices to reflect changing times. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you've got many more, but there's some real good examples to me of what the, chain, the challenges have in the day-to-day. -day. The reason why I ask you the question is that those challenges 
five a year ago probably wouldn't be there. You always have different challenges, but the acceleration of business challenges today, we'd all probably agree, is accelerated beyond belief. You know, we've relied upon the same way we've traded for many, many years. Things which we have now are, you know, your business plan, as I say, one of the interesting things that colleagues said to me, set fire to your business plan. Because in the, in the past, we had a plan to set fire to it. Because, hey, do you know what? It's no good anymore. We've got to think differently. So why is that a big challenge? Well, the big challenge is, is primarily for our educational system, um, not blaming anybody here, it's just the way we actually learn and we've been taught, not just in this country, pretty much most countries in the world, we are more today uh, focused on management rather than leadership. So what's the key difference between the two? Well, people mix them up. Management and leadership are always said to the same term, leadership management. Yes, we have to have a balance of both. But what we generally focus on, especially um, from small businesses to big businesses, we are really focused on management. We love planning. We hear it, you know, strategy or no, it's planning. You know, organization, controlling things. You hear this all the time in, oh, you know, we've got to run in a very, very well-organized business. So that's what we've actually literally been disciplined into. That is what managers are being told to do so the other side of it and what we're doing management for it's all really we're just right trying to create and um, create predictability because if we know what's going to happen and we can predict it we can plan for it we're organized so we can deliver a good service challenge with that today we're well, listening to your challenges but you know what how did you know that China wasn't going to be able to supply any longer. How do you know one minute you can't actually deliver what you normally deliver? How would you know you wouldn't be able to go to a meeting? Think about some of those challenges you've just said. They've literally gone all out of the window. The world has changed. So this is where leadership comes in. And what a lot of businesses in changing times are not good at is leadership. So purpose of leadership, yeah, is, is change setting different directions, motivating people. It is the bigger skills, the skills which, to be honest, people say, I've gone on a leadership course. Have they really learned the real skills of leadership? So we're going to be touching on those. Just when we look at 10 today, there is many more, but the 10 what we've just picked out for in changing times uh, to actually look at. So what I'd like to ask you is another question yeah what stops us being effective leaders now be open here i know what stops me being an effective leader is i have some some issues sometimes my communication I'm not great with it so what stops you have a think about the things that stops us being effective leaders and there's loads of different things think about um give you give an insight is that from zero to four we learn the most in our lives why do we think we do that? Because we literally, we learn to talk, we learn to walk, we learn to actually eat, we learn to do all those things between zero and four. And if you actually look at that, what happens at four? We go to school at five, we go to school. Yeah, so we're taught, when, when what happens? We're actually told to do things in, a, in a, an effective way. And this is not just this country, there's loads of other countries do it. And yes, we look in different ways of learning, but I'll, some of it's down to the way we're learning to do things. We're not learning in a way which can really sort of embrace if you want change. Yeah. When we're learning to zero to four, we're having to learn to walk, crawl, all those things. And there's so much learning in that, so much change in that. And we're able to make mistakes. And what happens when we make mistakes? We're a, we're a baby. Someone says, oh, well done. Have a go. Have another go. Oh, you little thing. Say daddy, say mummy. We, we're encouraged when we're, we're actually supportive on that. But what we don't do is when we go to school, it's a bit more permission. You've got to stand over there. You've got to sit over here. It's a different way of learning. So let's get some feedback on some of, some of the things. So we've had those who may lead us. Yeah. Um, from Laura, internal politics. Paul mm -hmm. says, time to work on, in capitals, the business. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Louise, my terminology. Um, Alistair, being too deep in the detail to see the bigger picture and set a new direction. Yeah. Um, Laura, short sightedness. Glenn, confidence and bravery. Marion, or cure. Oh, I think this means a cure for everything. Mm -hmm. um, Daria, I mean, I'm loving all these names, not having clear objectives for our business. Christina, getting dragged into the detail. Leah, wrong mindset. And Jean, fear of change. Yeah. I think. Oh, and Kath, uh, time to think and plan. Yeah, I think all those things, I think there's not any business in this country that would actually say they are actually good at all those things. Yeah. So that's the thing which I just want to share with you here. Don't beat yourselves up because we all suffer for the things if you've shared. It's a case of knowing it. And it's actually, it's an emotional intelligence thing, really, just being aware of where we should be. So this is just a look at some of the things we're just going to cross the day. So just a few ones we're just going to look at. And these ones I've just picked up is uh, things which we will help us certainly in changing times. So, you know, it, it means inspirational decision-making, creativity, communication, flexibility, yet yeah, nor the noise, resilience, having a growth mindset, ability to take risks, change, big, big thing, and maintaining energy. For me, it's a big learning is the main changing energy, which links into a load of things about well-being and all the rest of it. But if you haven't got energy, you can't drive yourself or your business forward. So let's just look at the first one, which um, to me, we hear about it, inspirational. And a lot of I link this to vision, having a vision. So when we've got real challenges like we've just got now, it's very, what people do is they go into what I call the management space. They try and create predictability. But if you do not know how many people knew that we want to go into another lockdown, people probably could guess it, but when? Is it going to be next month? Is it going to be, is it going to be just in the, in the COVID situation? It's quite hard for people to look the vision. So literally on the vision to inspire people, you've got to create a vision. And what people tend to do is they tend to create those visions too short term. So they're looking at now the situation now. We need to be looking right down, down three years down the line. Yeah. Well, so that's really hard. I know it's hard, but let's start actually thinking about it. Let's engaging with our colleagues and get them, get them involved. If we create that vision, we can start inspiring them because what people are looking for is real people who've got a purpose, who can see the future. As then Churchill said, you know, when you actually can see the future, you can actually give people purpose. And if you give people purpose, it's amazing how inspired they are. So what being inspirational is about for me is all about creating the vision, then getting that engagement. Because you're not a leader if you have no followers. And that is a really important statement. If you have, you're not a leader and you have followers, it doesn't mean you've got to be the top of the tree of your organization. It just means you may have your colleagues. Your, your people who work for you, the people that you work for can be your followers. If you've got that inspirational mindset and you can do that actually by engaging with your colleagues, being passionate what you do, and more importantly, have self-belief. Have belief in yourself that you could get through it and have belief in your colleagues. If you have that, you create inspiration. And that inspiration, so this is the how. If you create inspiration, when you're going through tough times, people look off upon you for that assistance. You give that assistance, which supports them with their well-being. And more importantly, they want to follow you. And if you've got followers, you do amazing what you can do because that creates that teamwork, that creates that engagement, that comes at bond. And I've seen so many experience, so many recently of bad organized, bad leaders or bad managers, in fact, who are not inspiring their colleagues. In fact, they're doing everything possible to actually demotivate them. You know, some more company 
was quite proud um, of um, reducing everybody's wages through um, these times. How inspirational is that? When we're going to work harder because we've got less people, got other people on furlough. But you know what? We're going to cut your wages. Yeah. So is that engaging? That is just cussing. That's just saying, well, oh, well, we, you know, got to look after the pennies to look after the pounds to make sure we're here. Well, okay, but let's look at the future. What happens when we come out of this and everybody's going back into work and people are, they don't forget. People do not forget. It's a big national company. They've just done this. And there's lots out there that's done it. And they've said, oh, you know, well, we, we didn't borrow money off the state. No, you borrowed money off your staff, which you're not going to pay back. So is that creating a, a group of followers? Are you inspiring them to work for you? No, you're not. You are just actually saying, do you know what? We think we can take an opportunity here. That's not leadership. That's not being empathetic. That is, that is just managing the day. It is not looking for the tomorrow. And what we're really saying here in this space is what you've got to do is look for tomorrow. You've got to be looking. This, we're going to get through this. Well, whatever situation it is, it may be not a supply. It may be something else that's not happening within your business. Of course, some of your challenges, which you've just shared, real tough stuff. But what we've got to do is believe we're going to get through it. And more importantly than that, we're going to do better. As I say, a real great saying, where there's adversity, there's opportunity. This is where the differential between management and leadership. Management detests adversity because it's not predictable. Good leaders, do you know what, adversity. So how can we reframe that to make it an opportunity? And for those we will encourage, do that, you become inspiring. So let's just look at the second one, which we have. Next one, decision, to be decision-making, being decisive. Decision-making within uh, businesses today, well, my goodness me, indecision is, the, is, the sort of a, is what's happening. Do we do that? Do we do that? What about that person? Oh, I'm not sure. Do we cut our staff? Do we recruit? Sort of a company. The other day, you wouldn't believe it. I rang a company because I've decided, um, doing up a place, I've decided that what I'm going to do is have, go totally green. It's going to have ground some funk in. I rang up a company and... Uh, I said, um, could you help me? Firstly, didn't answer the phone for a long time. When I eventually got through, hmm, we're not taking any more inquiries. So I thought, this is incredible. You know, you're meant to be so caught cool in tough times. You're not, no, we're so busy. We can't take any more inquiries. Okay. Yeah, we can't get any staff. Okay, so you can't get staff. And there's meant to be so-called people coming unemployed. No, we can't recruit staff at the moment. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Um, no sort of, can we take your details when we can? No, um, no, we've decided to scale down and we'll, we'll see what happens. Tough stuff. Well, I'll be surprised if they're around. They may be busy today, but I didn't forget. I'm going to look elsewhere. And if you don't make tough decisions, even some of the hard ones like, well, do we make people redundant? You've got to be honest with people. And what people are doing is they're not doing the tough stuff. And they're, oh, goodness me. If you've got to make someone redundant, you do not think, your plan, you do not, you do not see, you can, you're going to make someone, don't wait around, just do it. Because it gives that person an opportunity to be in the front line of getting another job. Why do, and as I always share with you, if you don't have to give someone bad news, they know about that bad news before you tell them because you're leaking it through your body language. So why be cruel? Do it now. So the tough stuff, and it may be changing offices, it may be and doing tough for this bad, or you may be having people's bad behavior in the office. Just face it, just get on with it. Lead from the front. It's tough stuff this, but do it. Because if you don't, you'll cause stress to yourself and stress to the other people around you. So how do we do that? Well, a skill, creativity. And I'm always challenged on this. Well, people say, well, I'm not very creative. It's not drawing paintings or, or writing. You know, it's not actually being very good at art. What this is, is, is 
having ability to allow yourself the freedom to take away those constraints. Remember what we happened when we did zero to four, we were really good at learning. And we were creative. We're learning from crawling to walking. We're trialing different things. Yeah, we can do this. We can what would we allow ourselves to make mistakes. Yeah, look at creating a culture within your business and your colleagues, maybe just your colleagues, which you allow creativity. You allow us to handle them predictability and welcome it rather than defend yourself from it. Innovation leaders, or good leaders are able to look at it and say, but you know what? We're going to have an unpredictable time because that is a constant. Einstein said that. What is the constant in life? Change. And he was a far wiser guy than I ever be. He said, one of the biggest constants in life is change. And what that means is when we're able to cope with it, we've got to be able to be creative in the ability to innovate, to break away from that sort of complete, utter permission culture, create a culture within our, with ourselves of forgiveness. People make mistakes. Don't blame the individual. Let's find how it happened and actually look at the process or look at what's caused that behavior. But a lot of the time, we look at the behavior rather than the individual, we can understand why that individual's acting that way and we can resolve it. It may not necessarily be that the individual is a bad person. It's just the fact of the matter is that, you know, circumstances occurred and we've got to learn from it. We'll be touching on that in a minute about really thinking in a different way. So let's look at now one of the things which I'm not very good at, which is um, communicating effectively. I am rubbish at communication. I like to communicate in a particular way, and I sometimes forget others in it. So when I'm communicating, <coughs> I'm sort of sometimes, what I do is I do, you know, I'm verbal. I, I like to see people face to face. Um, I'll talk to people on the phone, but my email communication is just not great. Yeah, people want detail. I'm not a detail guy. I'm a big picture guy. So that's okay for me if someone's communicating to me in that way. But somebody wants the detail, they need to have that information. If you don't have that information for them, how are they going to receive it? So there's a term which we always use, and you might have heard this before, is make sure you're tuned in to the right radio station. And what means that is that if you are communicating on Radio 4, and you're giving the news. If you are, if, if you are wanting to get to somebody who listens to Radio 1, you've got to choose to retune into their station. So the terminology is WIFM. Probably heard this before. What's in it for me? What's in it for FM? Yeah. What's in it for me? So you've got to think, how's that person going to receive that communication? How's the message going to carry on? So when someone gets that information, they can understand it. And when we're talking about change, which is what we're talking about here, communication is so, so important because if we, admit, we actually say something slightly not correct in our communication when we're talking about change, it can affect people's well-being, their health, um, their effectiveness, Absolutely everything. So it comes back to that thing about inspiring and giving a good um, vision in the first place, make sure the bigger picture's there. Yeah. So what we've got to have in these times is real empathy. And empathy is not sympathy. It's actually getting the shoes of the people that we're communicating with, which can take a little bit of time, but I can assure you it's worth it. So whatever your message is, you actually are making sure that they are understanding it. And it's not just a one way. Communication's a loop. So make sure they hear it, they see it, they actually read it if they are visual, and they actually understand it and give them an opportunity to communicate back. And when they've understood it, then they're on board. Because some of it might be brilliant news, 
but because they're actually in a space of negativity themselves, they're just not understanding it. So we've got to communicate in different things. The terminology is different strokes for different folks. Yeah, so some people are visual, other people are totally utterly in the detail. They want, or they don't believe it. So what have you said? Great, could you send me an email? Great, we'll send them that email. Make sure they've got it. Because we want people on board, as I said, a leader is not a leader without followers. You want people on board, we've got to make sure we communicate. And make sure when it's communicated, they've actually heard it. So as I say, when you've told them, tell them again. And when you've told them again, explain it to it again to make sure people have got it and it actually comes on board and they understand it. And when you've got people who are asking questions, don't ignore them. Don't say, well, do you know what? You didn't listen to what I just said. Answer those questions. And if you don't understand them, don't brush them off because you'll lose your credibility as a leader literally straight away if you do that. So communication, massive. And we see it all the time. Some really good news was shared with a colleague with a company of mine. Um, and it was really they want a new contract. And instead of actually cheering in the office, it was dull. And what I, I walked, walked to him, I said, he said, I don't understand. I've told him we've just won this new contract. It's absolutely brilliant. And I said, well, what happened? He said, they're all miserable. I said, well, why are they all miserable? And he said, I don't understand it. And he said, uh, all I had was, oh, that's going to be more work for us. Which is true. But as you say, did you explain that gives them security for the future? Did you explain how important this was to the business and how, it, how it's great for them for their business? No, I didn't do that. I just told them we got more work. We just want a new piece of work. And it's a big lot of work. So all they did was they heard the negative of what they meant for them, but they didn't look at the positive. So again, with communication, it's a case of making sure everybody knows the bigger picture and understand it and get into their understanding. If they've got more work, share with them. Hold on, we're going to get more resources. We're going to recruit more people. So it's not just one bit of information. It's the bigger picture. Okay, so when we're doing all this stuff, um, I always say be flexible. Now, this is a bit that people struggle with because management, if we're in the management mindset, and we always call it space. So we have management space and we have leadership space. And management space is about actually not being so flexible. Yeah, it's about control, it's about control, predictive. So um, being in leadership space is all about having a flexible mindset. It's about, you might have heard the term black box thinking. Black spot thinking is learning from our mistakes with the two boxes on an air, aircraft. When a, car, a plane crashes, they don't just listen to the, don't just look at the technology, what's technically going on. They listen to the conversations. What do they do with that information? They don't say, well, it's the pilot's fault or the co-pilot's fault here. They learn from that information. So they use what we call a flexible mindset to actually start thinking of how we can improve it. So when things go wrong and there's setbacks, let's look at how we can be flexible and flexible in our thinking to improve things. Just because we've done it that way for many times, now the rules are different. The world has changed. How can we be flexible? How can we change? How can when things are going wrong? So great, how can we do that? And flexibility, I believe strongly, is a skill. It's a skill that can be learned. And it's a scary, scary space for a lot of people to be flexible in their mindset. The great thing about flexible mindset is that when things are changing at a rapid pace, you're able to cope with it easily. If you've got a rigid mindset, what happens is when all these things are changing to you and things are happening within your organizations, we actually get totally frozen. And we're frozen in that space. We struggle to actually move forward. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be moving for one literally pace at a time. But if we're actually 
totally in rigid mind space, we struggle to move forward. So this is about accepting change. So we link on to resilience is that it's taking acceptance. Yeah, okay, another change, I accept it, rather than fighting it. And when people fight change, do you know what? As Ayn said, said, do you know what? It's predictable, it's gonna be more change, so you can't win. So we just have to accept it and go with it. And great leaders, and leadership is all about sort of accepting change, going with it, finding it, and actually being able to deal with it. What people do is they fight it. And when you fight it, all you do is you cause pain to yourself, pain to your colleagues. And more importantly, it's really, really sad here, is you're not accepting that the world is moving on. And as the, we move on in, in, our, in the world, in our businesses, the only way to grow a business is to keep growing it. And that's a stupid statement, but you could say, well, the only way to grow a business is to keep growing it. Well, that means it keeps moving. Or people think if you just stay as you are, you're safe. No, you're not. You're absolutely so not safe if you stay where you are. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep developing. Because if you don't, change happens and you're left behind. And if left behind within your, 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 your organization, um, surprise, surprise, you, you're no longer an organization. And there's so many organizations we've seen been really successful 10, 20 years ago, even five years ago, and today they're failing. Yeah, it's literally like the, the companies that haven't embraced the internet. Companies you see on the high street that are struggling that should have embraced the internet a long time ago. And now when home shopping and delivery is big, they're not able to, uh, to actually really embrace it further. So it's a case of being having that flexible uh, space. So let's look at the next thing, which is the bit which I said a communication I'm not great with. Maybe I was telling a porky pie, noise is the one I really struggle with. This here, avoiding noise. And noise is the thing that actually causes stress. And as a leader, it is crucial that you try and maintain your well-being. And also, more importantly, you get things done and you have a purpose. So when, um, when you're trying to get things done, there's all these things coming in, all these problems coming in and changes things. We get distracted. I get distracted. I'm absolutely the world's worth. I've got so many things going on in my brain. And then we're thinking, great, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to do that. So actually maintaining what's my focus, yeah, is absolutely, totally, and utterly crucial in these times. So what we say here is, as a leader, you've got to maintain that you do not get distracted and you keep focused and you're on the main journey. Now people say, well, how can you do that if it keeps changing? That's okay because we can flex, but we get back onto track to where that could be. So we make sure the, the actual purpose of where we're going, yes, it may change, the journey may change, but we're still going, we're, going, we're, we're carrying on. And if you can maintain um, a sense of keeping the noise low so we can focus, surprise the things, we can do the things right. And what means for others around us is they feel calm. If they feel calm, they feel safe. If they feel safe, they're more likely to be more productive. So ignoring the noise, you'll get people Oh, did you hear what's on the news yesterday? Did you hear what's the news this morning? Did you hear what's on social media? Did you hear what's on this, that, and the other? Sorry, I'm focusing on the day job. And the day job is working for tomorrow's job. Let's focus on that. Yes, it's not about ignoring all the world events. It's just saying, well, what can I do? What can I do today? What can I do in the next hour that's going to make a difference to our organization's well-being? And what's going to actually make sure we're here tomorrow? It's focusing on that, not getting distracted, but all the things which you have no influence over. And this is all about low focus of control, which we talk about in the resilience program. But it's, it's, it's a case of actually being focused on what we need to be doing rather than getting distracted. And what we see in leaders or managers that are not doing this 
They get, they're zooming around, they're jumping around here, there and everywhere, wondering what's going on rather than focusing on what they should be doing, which is actually leading the business, having a purpose, having a strategy, looking, looking ahead, having an ABC plan rather than just focusing on the one plan and actually thinking long term. So this is really important to us um, as, as a leader to be give that sense of anchorage, if you like, a place that's a safe home for those who are, are following you to feel, well, do you know what? I know where that guy's going. That guy is focused on our business and he's ignoring the noise. He's, he's got purpose and he'll get there or she will move our business forward. We have belief in that person. We believe in her that she is the person that we know we want to follow. And how we do that? We don't get distracted from things which we have no control over. So what do we link this to? Well, we link this to resilience. Now, it's easy to say, and we hear a lot about resilience in the day to day, but the ability to have some of the things we've talked about, the ability to bounce back, the ability to, as a leader, when we've got continuous change going on, is not to get too depressed or too down. That's easy to say, but well, hold it. How is that going to affect me? Am I going to be able to deal with it? Can I actually get back? Yes, I can. And this is all about controlling our emotion, but more importantly, as a leader, it's all about leading. And that is supporting and looking after your followers, whoever they may be. And those followers may be colleagues on the same level as yourself. They might, you may be the chief exec for an organization. But if you do not bounce back from adversity, what that will mean is the people who are following you will not bounce at all. And I've, you know, dealt with, you know, companies that literally the board have gone off sick or they're, they're struggling, which, which is natural. These things happen. But it's a case of if, you, if you're having a time without your well-being or resilience, get help, get support, get some external support. But as a leader, you've got to be in a situation where you can bounce back. You've got to show that real, true grit and determination. This is, again, having that purpose again having a plan, having a future, being able to learn from mistakes and not take it so personally. As I said, do you know what? We all mess up every day. I'd probably screw up at least one or two times. Yeah, but rather than actually having a mindset of, oh my goodness, I'm a failure, or what we're gonna do, do you know what? We can learn from this and how can we can do better? And it's having a resilience mindset that actually by being resilient as a, an, as a leader, we can lead in a way where people feel safe. And I say that quite often, but it, what people want is in changing times, they want somebody to, be, to follow. They don't want somebody who is not got that element of resilience, who's struggling. Because, hey, if you're struggling, I'm, you are, you're the captain of this ship and you don't know which way we're going, do I want to get on your ship? No, I don't. So it is tough stuff for leaders. Really, really tough. But I would say if you're struggling in this space, don't, don't be afraid. Ask for help. Get support for yourself. Because it's so, so important to be resilient in these changing times. Because if you're not, what you're doing is you're doing a disservice to yourself. But more importantly, you're doing a disservice to your colleagues and those who are following. You're not helping them. You're not helping their well-being either. So get yourself some support. So resilience is absolutely really important. And great leaders, this is where great leaders step up. Um, they really, really step up. Um, they're the ones who you really want to follow in tough times. They're the ones that look at opportunity and see, they look at adversity and see an opportunity. So this links to mindset and mindset of a continuous learning. What I talked about earlier was, is having a forgiveness culture rather than a provision culture. When you have an organization that runs a business, which is everybody has to ask for permission to do anything, what you're doing in changing times is it is really, really hard for people to develop. 
really hard for people to develop. And when things are going wrong, it's even harder to them to be able to cope with um, the situation. Yeah, I was talking, there's a um, colleague of mine who runs a coach business, coach bus, bus business. And I was saying to him, you know, how's it going? Which was a quite a sore point to say, how's it going? Considering his business was pretty much uh, got 15 to 16 coaches and they've been parked for the last five or six months. And he said, oh, well, it's uh, interesting. And um, I said, well, how is it, how, you know, how is it affected? He said, well, we've just refunded 400,000 pounds worth of refunds. Okay, okay, 400,000, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good, you know, we, we, we sort of, these things happen, we've given them the money back. So I said, Bob, and um, so what's going to happen? He says, oh, no, so we're positive. And I said, positive? Yeah, yeah, positive. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's probably going to affect our competition. Our, com our competition who do not embrace change, he said, because we've changed a lot. We're looking how we can really look at the future. So we do a lot of tools, he said. He said, next year, we believe that people are going to be staying at home more than they did last year. Bob, I said, oh, that's interesting. She says, you just look how many people have tried to book a hotel, how, try and book a hotel in this country recently. Really hard. People don't feel safe in this country. So I think, he said, my prediction is that we are going to be able to do more chores next year. In fact, my inventory, I'm looking to actually offer more excursions in the UK next year than we've ever done before. Crikey, Bob, yeah. So on the same, literally on the same event, talking to another coach operator. And I said, how's things? He said, dire. So I said, how, how dire is it? He says, no, it's horrendous. So I don't think we're going to get through. Similar business. So I don't think we're going to get through. So what's that? No, the orders are not. No one is ordering. So what about next year? You know, you know, taking a bit of the information of this game. And he went, yeah, well, I think he's just, oh, I know his business. I think it's okay for him. He's always doing well, that bloke. Yeah, smells of roses, you know. Um, well, well, I don't think it like that. I just think of where we are now. I'm just looking at the past couple of months. We've lost loads of money. I'm really, really concerned. I said, but what are you doing about changing? Well, what do you mean changing? Well, we do what we've always done. That's why we're successful. Okay, so you're not looking at the future. No, future? How can you look at the future? We don't even know what's happening tomorrow. I just said, oh, that's interesting. So you're not looking as an opportunity. No, he said, crikey, I'm surprised if we get through tomorrow. Predicting, he said, can't predict next year, can't, can't do it. So just two businesses in the same sector, that sector really being badly affected. One, um, really saying, do you know what? There's going to be a real opportunity here. We just got to realign it. We're going to live with, with it. And do you know what? I'm going to take advantage of it and a thrive. That one coach company, it's a Norfolk based co coach company, was voted the best small coach operator in the UK. We should be proud of that factor. I have to give him a shout out, Eastern's coaches. Yeah, and he deserves, to, he deserves to be the best operator in this country. That's because of his mindset. That's because he's looking positively to the future. He's looking at what can be done, yeah? And what can be new. And he's embracing technology. Go on to any of his, his tour coaches. He's got the best of the best. He's got, he just said, I spent 3 million quid on coaches. Yeah, not so good, but hey-ho. The future, the future is. So it's having the ability to flip the negative to the positive. And that's not an easy thing. But as a leader, if we do not have the right mindset, and that's the positive mindset, and treat it as a learning opportunity, what we're doing to our colleagues is really, it's not good. You could argue it's evil because they're looking for that leadership from you. Yeah. What we need also is to search for feedback. We may not get it right as a leader. So what we've got to be doing is asking for feedback from our colleagues. And feedback is a gift. If someone actually gives you feedback, I got some feedback recently. I hated it. I was literally crying. I was literally crying in a corner. Um, on, not on a general time, it really hurt me. 
Yeah, there, there was a piece of communication I said much of my strength that was sent out and it was really wasn't good. It affected me because it made me look good, bad, and it also affected the business in a sense. And I was absolutely devastated by it. Do you know what? I have learned from that. And what I've learned from that is that it was, do you know what? We'll never, ever allow, if we possibly can, communication of that sort going out again. So that's improved our business rather than just, you know, because that communication carried on going for ages. We're looking at a learning, learning thing and saying, well, hold it. How am I ever going to make that mistake again? Maybe I shouldn't be sending the emails. But more importantly, it was actually, let's just think, take the feedback on. It's criticism, you could argue, but no, let's embrace it. Thank you for giving me that information. Feedback's a grip, yeah? Challenge ourselves, look at it and say, how can we actually be better? We've got that strong mindset. How can we improve? Think about Bob. He actually is looking how we can improve things, do a better job. Look at the opportunities. Look what he was looking for. Crikey, we sell more stuff. That is where the right mindset is as a real, real leader. And creating a learning culture within your organization is that we keep learning all the time off each other and actually taking it on board rather than going, oh, not taking that on board. Well, well, that's not, that's not good. You know, that, that, that is not helpful. So what we've got to do is in all that is a thing which in lead, you hear a lot of people saying this is not what we should be doing, but I actually totally embrace it. We've got to take risks. Now, you think about that first slide of management and leadership. Management is not about taking risks. Management is the reverse of taking risks. Yeah. Leadership is about taking risks. And people say, oh, calculated risk. Yes, of course you calculated. But risks could be, do we keep the office shut or do we keep it open? Risk could be, do we close the business today, as a colleague of mine did, and at least get everybody paid redundant, or do we keep trading on? That's risks. But actually, we don't take risks, we don't get anything done. And if we don't take risks as a leader, we can't move forward because we actually are stifled and we're literally frozen in a period of time where we can't move, get our brains working. So we've got to take risks and we've got to look at the opportunities and think big picture and have the self-belief to make those tough decisions, which we talked about. And we've got to have a feeling, well, do you know what? Some of these decisions I'm making won't work out. And that's okay. I can accept making mistakes. Great leadership is about saying, well, do you know what? Oh, well, my mistake. Well, there you go. I've, I've taken it on board. I'm going to learn from that rather than get totally bombarded with, oh, I can't make mistakes. It's got to be perfect, 100%. Well, the lo logic is that's not how it works. We all make mistakes. Some make less mistakes than others but we make mistakes. And rather than treating them as the enemy, we should be embracing them as learning. And as a leader, we should be, oh, great. These are the things, great, how can we learn from that? And if we can do that, taking risks becomes not a negative, it becomes a positive. Because if we get our staff and our colleagues that feel they can make decisions, they can take risks, they can, they'll be more engaged. And when they're more engaged, they're more productive. Yeah? And more importantly than that, we stop the blame culture in organizations. When right, organizations have a blame culture, do you know what? That is just poisonous and it's so negative. And if you're in a, in a, in a, in a business that's got that, you totally and utterly zap the energy out of your business. You zap, oh, well, who did that then? Who's the, oh, she, she did that again, did she? Crikey. Oh, she's always making those mistakes. Oh. Now, this is not about being reckless here. As I said, I didn't say be reckless. I said take risks. Taking risks is leadership. Being reckless is not even to be put into a business content. It's not being reckless. It's about taking risks. So risk is what do we do? Let's think differently. Let's think how we can actually 
um, operate this business. That is taking a risk. Yeah, so it's completely different. So as I mentioned, energy, I would say this is probably the toughest thing for any leader to be able to do and change. But for me, it's the most important. We've even seen sort of out when people get hit with disease, I mean, the prime minister, it's energy one up, next is right down. And everybody's confidence is, oh my goodness me, what's gonna happen? Solely because energy. Now, it could be really good reasons, well-being, mental health, all those things. But maintaining a sense of energy, of energy, getting an energy is so, so important. So this links back to the purpose. Why am I here? Why am I doing it? And actually, if we've got that sense of purpose, have, we actually can start building that energy up. Yes, we can do things with our well-being, keep ourselves fit, all those good things, sleep and all that what we call them, the resilience, the, the environmental factors. But the biggest thing for me, for a leader, is to have that sense of purpose. Have clear goals, know where we're going, and be passionate and enthusiastic about it. It's not just, oh, well, we've got some targets there. No, do you know what? We're going to grow this business. We're going to grow this organisation. We're going to be the best at it. We are going to really give it our all. Be true to the values and beliefs we're in. Don't be authentic. Be an authentic leader. Don't be superficial. Don't be, oh, well, we're just saying it because it sounds good. Be genuine. So this is what we say about true values and beliefs. Be absolutely passionate about it. If we can do that, surprise, surprise, that energy will come from in. in. And if we have our leadership is energetic, it is infectious an infection in the positive nature, which means we are supporting our colleagues, helping them to be better. Look at, so it's key to look after ourselves. As I always relate to, as I said, what do they say in a plane? And when we're actually, you know, um, disaster recovery, they say the first thing, make sure you look after the mask on your face first before your children, which is completely against what we naturally want to do. We want to protect our children first. Well, if you link that to leadership, we need to make sure we look after ourselves first to look after our colleagues and our staff. So it's really important that energy, enthusiasm is so, so infectious. And as a leader, what you can do to support your colleagues around you is so important if we can start building that up. And I know it's not easy. I didn't say this stuff is easy. Leadership is so much more it's hard skills to do than management. So, so much more tough. It's a tough space. But with good leaders, that's what we need to be doing. So if we just look at, in summary, what we've, we've touched on today is, as a good leaders, is about visionaries, thinking about tomorrow. We're talking about risks, showing passion, building that trust within, it, within the organisation, so, sowing seeds for the future. Yeah, being an evangelist, yet delivering success and it's as a business. Leadership is not easy, never ever profess to be. Um, you know, what we really just say though, don't dismiss it. It's something which people may say, oh, well, they've got it naturally. No, they're skills we can all learn. On that point, I just really want to, to, to open it to any questions, anything you like. Um, say if, anything you like at all, Really happy to uh, see if I can help. Thank you, James. Um, so we received one question, but if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to pop it in the Q&A or just pop in the chat function that you'd like to verbally ask the question. That's not a problem. Um, so we've got a question from Daria saying, would it be useful to also get feedback from followers? If so, what advice would you give to a leader to get honest feedback from his slash her followers, especially when one knows followers may fear jeopardizing their job by saying something negative about their leader? Okay, this is all about having a trusted culture. Um, because if we're actually a follower and we, we can't give, can't don't actually feel comfortable enough to give our leaders um, feedback, what we're actually saying is the culture we've got is coming back to what I said earlier, permission culture. And 
So we've got to start building that well, we, with the trust thing and building rapport, but we've got to give people the confidence that they can do. So from a leader's perspective to get feedback is actually asking to give feedback. So it's the first stage of a good leader to ask for that feedback, but do that on a one-to-one -one basis. Do not do that in an office with a load of people there because you will not get feedback. So it's actually been genuine and sit down and just say, you know, like, well, I'm wanting to look to see how to improve and that have, have some feedback. Now, if it's on the flip, it's about help give a follower giving to their leaders. That's a different thing. So again, it needs to be a safe environment away from the hustle and bustle of the day to day and give it, if you're going to give criticism, make sure it's framed well with the right language. We're saying, you know, um, my boss, yeah, I was just wondering if I could share something which I've noticed some feedback, which I thought might be really good for the business. Don't make it personal. And they, you say, whatever is it? So what I've learned that you say, what would be really good for us is, so you take it away from the person. If you don't give it to them personally, if you're scared about giving that feedback, don't make it so a direct person. Share it as to the business would be. So it's the behavior we're addressing, not the person. Um, and that way we can start on the line of good quality feedback because good quality feedback in, uh, will make, will improve the business dramatically. Anything else? Thank you. Um, we've just had something come in, but I think it's just, no, it's just a nice comment. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. Obviously someone shout or you can't really virtually raise your hand if you've got any more questions. If not, um, we will end. Just to confirm that we will be sharing a copy of this presentation after the event, along with the recording as well. Um, so yeah, I've just answered that question there. Um, so yeah, as soon as the recording's available, I'll share that as well. But yes, um, as soon as I get a copy of this presentation, I'll share it with you as I know it's been extremely useful. So I think that's all the questions um, we are getting in. Um, I'm conscious that it's one minute to four. Um, let's just say, um, James, I'll send you a copy of all the positive comments that are coming okay, through well, in the chat well, functions well, as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, I just wanted to say if there's any offline, I'm sure, go, go just anything is on personal note, just give us a call through the chamber or directly. Um, more than happy to help in anything and just, just you know, free, free advice or anything else to support people in these times because it is tough out there. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, on this Wednesday. I mean, I don't know about you, but it gets dark so early now. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and let's, well, we're hoping that we will ECU you um, on one of our events soon. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Enjoy your day slash week and yeah, hopefully see you soon. Bye. You. Bye. Bye.